Looking to simplify your moto vlogging or just shooting setup with a high quality, high battery life, ultra reliable action camera? Well, the DJI Osmo Action 4 should definitely be on your radar. Before we get started, I just want to give a big shout out and thank you to DJI for sponsoring this video and for sending me the awesome new Osmo Action 4 to try out. Many of you know, I ran GoPros for a very long time and eventually got tired of them not working when they were supposed to. And so I started exploring other options. And the first solid other option I ever found was the DJI Osmo Action. I ran that camera for a couple of years, had zero problems with it, other than there was no uh, mic gain adjuster. So I had to run an external volume control. Minor issue, but annoying in that I had to run one more thing on my helmet. Battery life was normal for an action camera, so I had to run an external battery. But like I said, two years, thousands of miles, no issues. The thing just worked when you hit the button. When they announced the Osmo Action 3, I was very excited because one big new feature of it was ultra, ultra battery life, which would eliminate the need for me to run an external battery on the back of my helmet when I'm shooting all day. Well, I got the Osmo Action 3. It was a solid camera that I really liked, but again, that negative gain control issue was annoying, and I decided to move on from it and didn't know that that in a future firmware patch, which they have since added, they added negative gain control so that when you're running a microphone in your helmet, you can turn the gain down so it's not blowing out the audio the whole time. So when DJI reached out and asked if I wanted to try out the new Osmo Action 4, I was all about it because I love DJI reliability. I've had a great experience with them in the past, ultra high battery life, and this is their new top of the line ultra fantastic image quality camera. I am happy to say that it has been really cool and worked really well for me in my testing so far. Let's talk about the features of this amazing little camera. It's got a 1 slash 1.3 inch sensor, which gives it excellent low light performance. And it's got the 10 bit and D log M color, which gives you a lot more options if you want to do color grading, if you want to mess with that kind of thing. I don't. So I also appreciate the auto options that this camera comes with. It's deep freeze resistant up to negative 20 degrees Celsius. It has 160 minutes claimed battery battery life that is at 1080p 30. It'll do up to 4k and 120 frames per second. It has horizon steady and rock steady stabilization. So I run rock steady on a normal day to day. But if you are like doing backflips and stuff as a gymnast, or if you're a skier or a skateboarder or whatever, regularly leaving the ground and or becoming upside down, that horizon stable will stabilize 360 degrees. So it's got a gyro and it always knows what the horizon is. That's pretty cool. It's got a magnetic quick release built in that works incredibly well, holds very strong, but it's super easy to swap from camera to camera or to swap it from horizontal to vertical mode it does that really quickly which is super cool for a content creator like me it's got webcam mode it's got built-in wind noise reduction a built-in 2x zoom it's got dual touch screens keep in mind dji invented the dual screen GoPro only copied it. So you can control every feature of the camera from both the front and back screen. You can see your full shot. It retails for $399, but I think you're gonna want the adventure combo. That's what I got. That comes with the battery charging case and two extra batteries. So that case will quick charge your batteries while they're in there and also acts as a battery bank. So if you wanna charge your cell phone or something at the end of the day, you can. With long lasting batteries and that battery case, you're never gonna run out of power, especially if you keep it charging in your tank bag. That adventure kit also comes with a selfie stick and a few mounts and I think it's pretty cool and honestly I think it's the way to go. So the pros, what do I like about this camera? Well the battery life as expected is outstanding. Now I did not get 160 minutes, I was also not filming in a lab at 1080p 30 but I did get 100 plus minutes filming at 4k 30 on a very long ride on a hot day and frankly I'm super impressed with that. I filmed all day while riding at the Dork Camp Out both days of riding and the second day I came back with 70% battery life. That was after filming on and off all morning so I'm pretty happy with it and pretty confident that it would last me a whole day of filming and even if it didn't I would only have to swap the battery out once which is a lot better than the 45 minutes I've gotten with some cameras in the past because of that extra long battery life I don't have to run an external battery which is another thing to charge it can cause overheating issues because you're charging while using the camera all of that so really excited to get that off of my helmet with this camera and that's one huge bonus for me as a moto vlogger as a motorcycling content creator the setup is much simpler as a result let me show you what I mean here is a super simple simple setup that I created with a Dango gripper mount. I got a, uh, this is a boom mic from like a headset on the back. I've got the mic adapter here. Pop it onto any helmet. I don't need to have stuff built into my helmet. It's good to go at a moment's notice. And because of the extreme battery life of this thing, 
it'll work all day. So I don't have the disadvantage of not having my external battery. It just really simplifies my helmet setup, and I think that's a huge bonus of this thing. Speaking of simplifying your setup, no first party garbage adapter shenanigans going on with this camera. Regular old third party USB C adapters will work. I'm using this Boya BK4. It's like $15 on Amazon. You know, buy a couple spares, whatever, have one on every helmet, but it just plugs straight in and it just freaking works. Hard to argue with that. It's a huge plus over, say, a GoPro. The magnetic quick release works awesome. The negative gain control is built in and it goes all the way to negative 20 decibels. So it doesn't really matter how close your mic is to your face anymore. You can turn that down and not be blowing out your audio, no matter how loud you talk or hoot and holler in your helmet or sing. Who would do that? The image quality is fantastic. I've had it in and out of shadows at dusk, at, at dawn. Uh, the bright heat of the day, bright sun of the day, and it always looks really good. The camera, the auto modes in particular, because I'm no photographer. This camera has a ton of advanced settings. I don't really use them because the auto mode just works so well. So there's a ton of options in there for those who want to optimize for you photographers, but if you're just like me and you kind of want to just hit the button and have it look good, this is a great camera for that. One of the best I've ever used. Here's a key thing if you're a content creator like me. That snapshot feature where you just hit the button and it starts recording, it boots up super fast, like a second or two, which is way faster than any other camera I've ever used used. You'll see in some of my videos like the beginning of my sentence is cut off and that's even with me waiting like I hit the button and wait for uh, it to start up or at least I think it has started up and then start talking. This one's the fastest one I've ever used. Fast on, fast off. Works really well with that. The app connectivity is good. It works quickly and well. I've had nothing but good luck with the DJI app. They're pushing out firmware updates constantly. They're constantly iterating and improving their cameras which is something that cannot be said for their biggest competitor. It's also been just super reliable so far and I have not treated it nicely. Been out riding dusty, dusty, dusty conditions. I've wiped it off a hundred times a day. A lot of bouncing up and down out in the heat and it's been super reliable. I've had not one issue. Battery life's been great. Camera's been rock solid. Also really cool is the dual touch screen. It's really cool on the bike because you can see that it's recording while you're riding. You can look in your rear view mirror. I can actually see the blinking LED out of the corner of my eye on the back of the camera. And also really cool when you're off the bike. So you can set up shots, you can do a selfie mode thing. And so it could be your one camera. I could shoot everything I do with this one camera. I could put it on my helmet, go ride out to a place, take it off the helmet, put it on a tripod, shoot all the camping, put it back on the helmet, ride home. So it could be my one camera and it could be your one camera too, which I think makes it a good place to start if you're trying to get into this whole content creation thing. Or even if you just want to casually record your adventures, just a simple camera that works but looks good. It's hard to beat. Now it's not perfect. Every camera, every product has some cons. So here's a few things I don't like about it. I don't love the mic adapter setup. It's so cool that you can just use whatever, but I do wish there was sort of a more secure mic that fit in the door that opens up for the USB-C, something that I wouldn't worry as much about it wiggling out. I haven't really had any problems yet, but USB-C ports do wear out eventually. Something that snaps into that port would be nice. I bet there's some third party accessory on the way or it probably already exists and I just haven't seen it. But in stock form, it does kind of suck to have the mic thing just sticking straight out the side of your helmet. It does take it a second to recognize the mic in snapshot mode. So snapshot mode starts up super fast. So it has about two to five seconds of built-in mic noise before it realizes you've got an external mic connected. But once it does, it's totally fine. The good thing about that is it means it can adjust on the fly so if it was to wiggle loose but get reconnected the camera would figure it out and you would go back to your mic inside your helmet so you're not losing a whole day's audio because something got jiggled loose that's not something i can say for other cameras i've used so it's a con but it means that there is a pro in there i guess maybe more features than the average user wants or needs although the auto modes like i said do a great job but if you're not going to mess with them the action 3 might be a better choice it's a little bit less expensive because it doesn't have all of the super duper high quality camera features and it's not cheap. That's probably the biggest con, but no quality new action camera is. Everything else about it is very solid, so I think it's worth the investment, but your mileage may vary. So my final thoughts on this camera, uh, what's the conclusion? It's a great camera. Super reliable, great image quality. It's durable as hell. It's easy to use for idiots like me, but packed with features for power users. It has game-changing battery life. This camera with its battery life will change the way I film. It will change the way I set up my helmets. So it is so nice to have that just a couple hours 
hours, hour and a half of filming time, it will literally get me through a whole day or at least a whole morning. Like one battery change a day is tolerable, and especially if you keep on top of it and just change at lunch or whatever proactively. But having the battery run out because you only had 40 minutes in the middle of something cool sucks. And this camera, you don't have that problem anymore, which I think is awesome. It's a simple setup that's also super versatile. Multiple mounting options with the camera itself just mounts to the helmet. You don't even need the frame to put it on the mount because it's got a magnetic clip on the bottom all by itself. You only need that frame if you're trying to use it vertically, which is cool. So lots of versatility. For my needs, it could be my only camera, shoot on the helmet all day, stop at camp, take it off, shoot handheld all night, put it back on the camera, shoot all day the next day. It also is incredibly versatile for a content creator. So I can be riding something cool, shoot a bunch of horizontal for YouTube, right? And then stop, flip the camera really quickly, like five seconds. It'll auto recognize and keep going and shoot for TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook all at once. So a lot of versatility packed into a tiny package. Based on my experience with previous DJI products, I assume it will be rock solid forever. And like I said, excited to keep using it. So thank you again to DJI for sponsoring this video. And if you have any questions about the camera, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll obviously link it for you so you can check it out for yourself. But so far, very impressed with the Action 4 and uh, it comes from a legacy of really solid, reliable cameras. So I have no reason to expect it won't continue to be awesome. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. And please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Uh, thank you. Excellent. Thank you.